Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. <coughs> Welcome to the world of the G Alto, a fascinating recorder. It's a recorder one tone higher than our regular alto recorders in F. I'm going to introduce you to this wonderful instrument from the 16th, 17th century, what to play and how to read it. I'm excited, but first uh, let's rewind a little bit. This video has been made possible by Vincent Bernalan, who has kindly sent me his newest addition to the collection, a Ganassi recorder in G, and I'm gonna review it. Ooh, it always comes so nicely packaged. I am genuinely trying this one for the first time, but I've reviewed his instruments before, so I think I know what I'm expecting. Wait. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Oh wow, it has beautiful metal detailing. Ooh, that is a treat. Wow, look at that, lovely. It has single holes and there is a second package. So in the second package, we have two more bodies, one piece and in two pieces three bodies in total, all different lengths, so I suspect they're gonna be in 415, 440, and high Renaissance pitch, 466. Eee! Let's start with the 440 first. You know what I've got to play? A sound. Something exciting, these have original Ganassi fingerings. Rather than your Baroque fingerings, <laughs> we have Ganassi fingerings. Mm. If we're thinking Renaissance music, we typically go for the higher, brighter pitch of 466. That's a semitone higher. joyful it's only a semitone but it's like <gasps> and our low baroque pitch of Ganassi fingerings. What am I talking about, Ganassi fingerings? Let's get the book. In 1535, the Italian Silvestro Ganassi published La Fontagara, a tutor book for the recorder. He wrote about how to play, how to tongue, but also lots of pages on how to ornament music in the style of the time. Just like in any modern day tutor book, he gives tables of fingering charts for how to play the recorder. Now, the recorders he lists have a wide range, but the fingerings he gives are pretty different to today's Baroque style recorders. And here's the thing, um, I have learned that Ganassi recorders following these fingering charts haven't actually survived. The Ganassi instruments that we can buy today have been carefully reconstructed by makers who have gone to the fingering charts and figured out how would this have sounded, how can I make these fingerings work in real life. That is pretty amazing. Whereas on a regular alto you go da da Da, da. Here we have to go da, 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 da. Okay, so why an alto in G? 
Today, we're used to altos being in F. We actually see them throughout time. In fact, whereas today our recorder sizes are standardized in C, F, C, F, C, F, Renaissance recorder consorts would be tuned in fifths. C, F, G, D, A. And yes, there are many makers who research and produce these, such as Adrian Brown. What's interesting in Ganassi's book is that when he gives the fingerings, he doesn't write C, D, E, F, G. He writes the degrees of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. And as a player, I always approached La Fontagara with my soprano recorder, but it can equally be played on the alto. In fact, according to David Lasocki in his book, Not Just the Alto, the recorder referred to as a sopran by Ganassi is in fact a recorder in G, what we today call the G alto. The naming of the sizes of recorder varied widely. This same recorder, Ganassi's sopran, was referred to as a discant by Verdung, an alt by Praetorius, and a tipple, tiple by Cerone. And this is because the name referred to your role in the ensemble, not to a specific pitch. As long as everybody knew what to play and was the correct distance apart, it would work. I start these videos thinking that I'm going to explain things to you and end up getting embroiled in more mystery. And today I'm talking about Ganassi style G altos, but they also exist into the Baroque period as well. I just don't have one to show you. In fact, as I've talked about in this video, there's even evidence to suggest that Bach's Brandenburg Concerto number no. four was written with G altos in mind. But why play on G altos rather than F? The sound is higher and more importantly, brighter. I can actually show you because I have joints here that are a tone apart, like F and G. The lower. course in chamber music you will be taking different fingerings and that might have an effect on your sound. Something that can sound very open on one recorder can have more covered fingerings on a different pitch. So choosing between F and G you're weighing up the sound with the difficulty of the fingerings. Repertoire, what are we going to play on our beautiful instrument? I tend to go for 16th, 17th century stuff like around Ganassi and the music that I got to grips with on my Gialto were the solo pieces by Giovanni Bassano and Aurelio Vigiliano. Bassano's Riccicare are beautiful. They are solo epics in the style of ornamentation and they're so much fun to play, quite challenging. Of course, everyone plays number four. Giuliano also composed 13 Ricciacare. A Ricciacare was a piece that meant searching. So you had a musical idea and then it would search and explore all around it. These pieces, whilst quite advanced, are really nice because they enable you to get to grips with the whole range of the instrument. as I play a completely new recorder, I have to get used to everything again. The way of blowing, the particular fingerings, where the holes are. So this solo material is so good for that. For chamber music of this time, I absolutely love the pieces by Diego Ortiz. 
his Tratado de Glossas, the treaties of ornaments, basically. These include Richicadas with a baseline accompaniment, ornamented and sometimes even based on songs. this repertoire I have to do that tongue trill. This is a wonderful but frankly large and expensive book but don't worry these same pieces are available in lots of different editions including the solo books edited by Eric Haas that I talked about last week. Van Eyck! Solo music from the 17th century! Perfect! Forgetting to know your new G Alto recorder. I'm just changing to the high pitch. Let's go to the low pitch for something a bit more sedate. feel free to play anything you like on it. Folk music, classical music, contemporary music, pop music, anything that you want to hear. But how to read it? If you're playing solo solo on your own, of course, you can read the G alto with F alto fingerings, even with soprano fingerings, and it's fine. But if you're playing with other people, you are going to need to transpose. And yes, some editions, like my Eight Ricciccare by Bassano, this is published by London Pro Musica, do include both transpositions. But if we're getting serious about this style of music, we're going to learn the transposition. But Okay, there's something else. You can learn it in two ways. The G alto sounds a tone higher, so you can read the music a tone lower. But bear with me, we more commonly read the music up a seventh. Down a tone, up a seventh, in the end you end up in the same place. Why is this? So the lowest note of the recorder is notated on the sheet music like this, the G below middle C. This all refers back to the voice and singing. Where did these names come from? Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So we read the G alto recorder as if it was the range of the alto singing voice, which is roughly this. You didn't come to Team Recorder because you thought it would be easy, did you? <laughs> I've talked about learning new transpositions before, but my biggest tip is to find a couple of anchor points, notes that you know how the fingers are going to be, and then count up and down from there. Ooh, you wanna know something exciting? With all of these different pictures, we start to cross over. My G alto at 415 is in fact the same as my F alto at 466. <laughs> this one is made by Tom de Vries. I am so thrilled with these beautiful instruments. If learning the G alto, learning the transposition, this way of blowing and the different fingerings is something that you would like to try, then I think this is a fantastic step in. Apart from being really good, reliable instruments, the two really special points about Bernalam recorders are their durability and their price. This resin recorder is impervious to heat and to humidity. So if you're traveling or if you live in a country with extreme weather, then these are great. They are also at a cheaper price point than a handmade wooden recorder. So being able to have a nice instrument in three different pitches um, at a bit more of an accessible price 
maybe you want to upgrade later down the line, this is a nice option. So thank you so much to Vincent for sending me these instruments to try. I always love playing them and I'm going to leave lots of resources down in the description to start you on your G Alto Ganassi journey. And do you play G Alto already? Let me know in the comments. As always, you can subscribe. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is the Team Recorder Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. And here's some more videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.